In today's true crime tarot reading, I'm going to be revisiting the energy of Suzanne Morphew. I had already channeled Suzanne Morphew for a tarot reading before her body or her remains were found. And in that first reading, we were just asking, what happened to you? And during that reading, we found out that Suzanne was dismembered and buried. And I also got this serial killer card. Now, I wasn't sure if I got it because she was killed by a serial killer or if it's because the image on the card looks as though it's a dismembered body. But either way, the remains of Suzanne Morphew were found on September 22nd, 2023. They were found in Sawatch County, which is 45 minutes south of where she lived. Now, there, there's other evidence that does not place Barry in that area on the weekend of the crime. So, some people are also calling for fresh new eyes to look at this case that have no bias as to who could have done it. Um, basically, we need to start over and look at Suzanne's case from a new perspective, right? All right. Now, when I heard at the end of September that Suzanne's body was found, I couldn't see like how her body was found or what state her remains were in when the news first broke. But so far, I have gathered that Suzanne actually was scattered around in the area of her shallow grave. From what I've heard it being described as from the Daily Mail was that the shallow grave was in the middle. And then from there, like spokes on a bicycle, her remains were kind of scattered about from the central point being her shallow grave. So um, now that we know that Suzanne has passed for sure and we have found her remains, I want to revisit Suzanne Morphew, and I want to find out who did it. I want to at least ask who did it, because obviously the cards can't tell us straight up a name or something like that, but we can get a little more insight on who this killer really is. All right, and Suzanne gave me a little spooky season scare. I know I'm doing this reading on Halloween when the veil is thinnest, but just last week, when Suzanne was not on my mind at the time, I opened up my computer folders and saw a strange word doc as a recent item that had been opened. I found that weird because I hadn't been using a word document. So why would that be listed as one of my recently opened items? So curiosity got me and I clicked on it. And sure enough, it was the image of Suzanne Morphew just on a Word document. And this may not sound strange because I have channeled Suzanne before and I printed her photo off similar to like I did this time. But I never save those Word documents. I delete them immediately. I copy and paste the image and then I print it and then I delete it. So in my opinion, Suzanne kind of like was trying to communicate with me through my computer, which as a lot of you may already know, spirit can more easily communicate when it has to do with electronics or metals like coins, animals, and things like that. So I definitely saw this strange new Word document on my computer as a sign from Suzanne that it's time to revisit her case and it's time to let her speak once again. But this time, instead of asking what happened to Suzanne, we're going to ask for more information about who did it to Suzanne. All right. So in this reading, I'm not using tarot. I'm only going to be using the murder mystery oracle cards. And I will also be using my large deck, the true crime and conspiracy cards. So we're just going to dive right into it. This reading may not be as long or it might be. I don't really know yet. 
But as usual, I'm going to be opening myself up as a channel for the energy of Suzanne Morphew to come through. And while I'm a channel, this candle is going to be lit in Suzanne's honor. So while this candle is lit, I'm opening myself as a channel for Suzanne Morphew. And when the candle is blown out, I'm no longer a channel. All right. I just want to start by asking that the highest vibrations of light and love connect to my highest self and release all previous programming and unwanted energies. And now I'm going to light this candle and make myself a channel for the energy of Suzanne Morphe to come through and let us know who did it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Suzanne, for being with me here today. Thank you for any insight that you can give in regards to your death. I have my candle here. I'm in a little different setting tonight, so or today. Um, so you may not see it, but it's lit, and it will be lit until the very end. All right. I have my image of Suzanne propped up in front of me so I can gaze at her when necessary. I'm going to start by shuffling three times. I'm going to cut the deck, draw a card, and then shuffle again three times, cut the deck, draw a card, and do that three times with the Murder Mystery Oracle. My nose is so itchy, you guys. This happens when I channel. Okay. Suzanne, we want to know who did it. Who did this to you? Argument or fight is a strong factor. That's our first clue. All right, Suzanne. Second card. The murder weapon used will provide valuable clues. And um, I know that at this point, her remains are mostly like bones because so much time had passed and she was in the elements for a few years. But, I mean, we may be able to find out still if she was, you know, if a gun was used or a knife was used or what. All right, Suzanne. One more card from this deck. We want to know who did it. All right, one more shuffle. In the future, the killer may admit guilt. <sighs> well, hopefully... I hate it when we get that as one of our clues because it's in the future. It's not happening right now and it's not really helping us. But in the future, the killer may admit guilt. Maybe after being busted with the murder weapon. All right. All right, Suzanne. We just want to know who did this to you. Oh, we have fraud. And there's money. It's like Monopoly money on that image. Can you see it? So we have fraud is the very first card that just flew right out. Just FYI, another aspect to this case is, as I said before, Barry Morphew, her husband, was a suspect the first time around. They actually tried to convict, to, uh, 
take him to trial, but they dropped the charges only a couple weeks before his trial was set to begin. So now he is suing the police. He's basically suing the local government for ruining his life by making him a suspect. So I wonder if that's all just a fraud, kind of like a, a way to keep them off of him. I don't know. I don't know. Faked death. We have fraud and fake death. Obviously, Suzanne Morphew's body was found. But uh, like I said, it was 45 miles south of where she lived. Her bicycle was very close to her home and her helmet was found in a whole nother place. So it's almost like they tried to make it look um, like she went missing in a certain place when she didn't. Another strange thing is that she is known to go bike riding very often, but she always takes a particular water, water bottle with her called a Camelback. And she had not taken that on the day of her disappearance. The Camelback was still at home. So... They found that odd, the family. Okay, we just got trafficking and thief. If you remember in the first Suzanne Morphew um, channeling, we actually got the kidnapped card. So with thief next to trafficking, it's a similar sentiment to kidnapping. So yeah, the fake death, um, I think she was, obviously, they tried to make it look like she disappeared at a certain place or died at a certain place or was taken by a mountain lion or something like that. But in reality, she was trafficked. She was taken away. She was kidnapped and taken somewhere else, obviously, 45 minutes away. That was the aliens card. Let me get this one. All right, what about Aliens card? The Aliens card, to me, um, in many of these readings, is about mind control in some way. So I'm just trying to get a little clarity on that card. Okay, hold on. I dropped too many. Let's start this shuffle again. All right, Suzanne. Who did it? Someone who did it? Need more information. Okay. Okay, you guys. We got the imprisonment card. The serial killer card again. And we got power supply. And we have sad. I feel like with the imprisonment and the sad card, it's proving that um, Suzanne, after being taken from her home or from her bike ride, if that's what she was doing, was possibly being held somewhere, like imprisoned, right? And I wonder if... This is a serial killer only because <clears throat> she was found. Basically, they were looking for a whole nother victim when they found Suzanne's body. I forget the other victim's name, unfortunately. I think it's Edna. Maybe something like that. Um, so they were looking in this area for her body, but they ended up coming across Suzanne's body. And strangely, the same thing happened in July because we found Suzanne's body in September. But in July, they were looking for Edna's body in that area again, and they ended up finding a man's body in July. So clearly, someone's been killing people and dumping their remains in this area. And then we have power supply. I remember in the first reading, we got something about it being um, strange phenomena involved. I do know that many times a serial killer gets their power supply from taking the life of others or even taking the freedom of others through, you know, imprisonment, mind control, and making them suffer, basically. All right. Okay, Suzanne, who did this? 
Okay, y'all, I just flipped too many again. We're getting a little too much here. Let's shuffle. I'm going to shuffle the two decks together to kind of recalibrate here. Suzanne Morphew, who did it? Who did this to you? Did it? Let's see information. We got the word home. Like I said, um, it's possible that she was taken from her home, not actually from a bike ride, you know. All right. Who did this to you, Suzanne? There was a struggle that took place, some type of struggle. Okay, so we got the accomplice, partner in crime, along with accident, weird science, all right? We also got the debt card and the celebrity card. All right, you guys, so this definitely could have had something to do with family debt because we also got fraud, remember, with that Monopoly money. But it's possible that there was more than one person involved in the crime of Suzanne Morphew's death, dismemberment, and burial. It is true they tried to um, stage this as an accident or tried to look like an accident with the bike being in one place, the helmet being in another place. And we have the weird science card. I think just because they were trying to push this narrative that maybe she got eaten by a mountain lion. Even though there was like no blood around where her bike or helmet were found. So that's kind of strange. Oops. All right. I'm going to shuffle the other half. Suzanne Morphew. Who did it? Who did it? Tell us more about who did this. The boat card just flopped out, by the way. I don't know if they know someone with a boat or if they have a boat. And here we are again with the hotel motel card. We got the hotel motel card in the first reading. That's part of Barry's defense is that he was in Broomfield at a hotel or a motel. Not saying he's the one, but all I'm saying is that's part of the story here. And then we have dating. Ooh, I do know that um, Suzanne had a boyfriend, so someone she was dating. I don't know if that person had a boat or lived somewhere near water. But these three came out. Dating, hotel, motel, and boat. I'm going to have to look into that person she was having an affair with and see what's up with that guy. Okay. We got mountains. Yes, there are mountains. She lived in the mountains in Colorado.
Okay, we also got Desert and Secret Trip. The Desert card fell out earlier, but I put it back thinking to myself, if it's legitimate, you'll come back out. And here it is. So I don't know if she or someone took a secret trip to the desert. I know that there are some desert-like areas in or around Colorado. But the secret trip card is saying that, like, someone didn't know about the trip or it wasn't um, fully known by everyone. This could definitely have to do with this person she's dating, possibly as well. Okay. Then this card just fell off the table when I moved the deck. We now know it was a homicide because um, someone who does this to themselves or has an accident, they don't bury themselves in a shallow grave, right? It's definitely a homicide. Anyone trying to say it's not a homicide is incorrect at this point. All right, Suzanne, who did this homicide to you? We got intergalactic travel and secret space program, which sounds kooky, doesn't it? But the cards aren't exactly just what the words say. With the secret space program card, I always see that as, you know, someone saying it's one thing or one way, but really it's something else under the surface, right? And we got the intergalactic travel with it, which... Obviously, this is an image in the desert as well, if you take a look at that. But similar to the Aliens card, I see this intergalactic travel as something that is a mind experience, right? So someone was... I think someone was filling her head with things that weren't really the way they were, right? All right, Suzanne, who did this to you? Tell us more about who did this to you. Okay, we got private property, water, and healing. I think when it comes to healing, I do know that Suzanne was trying to take her life into her own hands just before her death. She had revealed to her husband that she wanted to leave the marriage. And I think that that is like, she was healing her own, you know, self. But then for some reason, we have water and private property. Again, does someone have property near water? Whether it's a lake, a river, ocean. Does someone in this case live near the water? Because we got that boat card as well. Along with the hotel, motel, and dating. Oops, I dropped way too many. All right. I don't know how much else we can really get out of this right now. We have surveillance. We got this in the first reading as well. So surveillance is giving us some kind of clues as to what happened to Suzanne Morphew. It's just a matter of if we're finding the surveillance and if we're looking at it properly. All right. Something about surveillance. We have intuition. The intuition card as well. I usually get this because, as you can see, they're reading tarot on this. I think um, whenever I get the intuition, it's confirming everything I'm saying. Oh, where did that go? Okay, we got law enforcement. After intuition. It's possible that law enforcement is on the right track. They just have to find the evidence to back it up. What's this? Crossroad. We got the crossroad card during the last reading as well. But we also got fake news. Propaganda. So who's giving us the fake narrative here? Is it the prosecutors? 
Is it Barry Morphew? We don't know. We have to make this choice using our intuition on what's fake news, what's real, what's fake. But there is some kind of surveillance out there because that was confirmed by us receiving that card during both readings. We got the hotel motel card in both readings. In this one, we got thief next to trafficking, but in the first reading, we got kidnapped. And we got the serial killer card in both as well. All right, so who is the serial killer, Suzanne Morphew? I'm going to put all these together and just shuffle like crazy, see what happens. <laughs> Right when I said, who did this to you, Suzanne? We got this card with cryptocurrency. All right. A lot of this could have had to do with money, you guys, because, I mean, think about it. If she's going to leave, she's probably going to want to take some of that marital asset with her, right? Right. Okay. All right, you guys. So there was a cleanup involved. Obviously, her body isn't in the same place. We got evil, affluent, and cult. The cleanup, maybe this is where the accomplice comes in, right? Because we have it as kind of like a group of people. A group of affluent people who are evil. Similar to a cult, they're very secretive, are involved in this cleanup. That's right after the spouse partner card. All right. So, Suzanne, is that all you have for us? Ah! Okay, I'm just dropping cards everywhere. I think that means we're done for now. If we feel if we feel the need in the future to revisit this case, I will. Um, because I'm emotionally invested in Suzanne at this point. So, an argument or a fight was a strong factor in Suzanne's death. The murder weapon used will provide clues. And in the future, the killer may even admit guilt for this, right? We got the fake death and fraud. The fraud could be that, um, remember, these were like the first two cards that we got. Fraud being the first one, fake death next. And if you remember, like I said, Barry is suing the police over being called a suspect, which is where we get that fake death. We got the trafficking and thief card, I believe, because Suzanne was actually kidnapped to be taken to another location while she was still alive. All right, we got aliens, which is somehow about mind control. Someone trying to take you away. Look, she was abducted. Like aliens, right? She was abducted, imprisoned, made to feel very badly. And we got serial killer and power supply. So I feel like someone was taking her imprisonment and her strong negative emotions about it as their own power supply. Similar to how any serial killer would do so. All right. <clears throat> Now, we also got these. At home, there was a struggle over some kind of debt. Um, and I think we got the celebrity card because of the way that they try to put themselves out into the public is that they don't have these kind of problems, right? I feel like Barry and Suzanne were trying to, like, put out this image of their life being a certain way, similar to how celebrities of Hollywood do. All right, now we got the hotel, motel, the boat, and the dating. So we do know that I think um, the husband found out about her dating someone else. Or maybe the dating is the reason she finally said, I want to break it off. 
But then we got Hotel Motel again, which we got in the first reading. And we got Boat, strangely. So with that Boat card, again, I felt it was about someone who lives near the water, river, lake, pond. I don't care what kind of water. Some kind of water. All right, we got the accident and weird science. Because, you know, they were trying to push this weird narrative, even though there's no evidence backing it up whatsoever. And we also got this card to confirm there could have been a, an accomplice in this crime of taking, kidnapping, and killing Suzanne. Okay, so we got the spouse partner card with the cryptocurrency as well. Another card of money. I think the... Uh, Suzanne's spouse was very worried about money in some way. Strange. All right. So we also got the law enforcement crossroad and propaganda fake news. I feel like with everything that's gone down in this case, we just really have to take a fair look at everything with this crossroads card. Because it could literally go either way based on what we have or at least what us, the public, has right now. Now, I'm hoping that law enforcement has more information than what they're willing to offer to the public, but we don't know. All right. We also got the intuition card. This could be confirming this reading, but also confirming what law enforcement thought about this. Because we got this near the law enforcement card. Remember, we also got the surveillance. Once again, this is the second reading where we got the surveillance card for Suzanne Morphew. So there's definitely something out there on surveillance camera. Now, it could be Barry Morphew just throwing away all the trash at different locations. But um, it could also be more than that. So there's surveillance out there for sure regarding this. And again, we have private property and water. Someone living near water could have to do with this as well. We got that desert and secret trip. So yeah, definitely something weird going on here. By weird, I mean like... Uh, someone's saying it's one thing, but really it's another. All right, and of course... The homicide card. And finally, the cleanup, evil, affluent cult. So, the cleanup involved in her death, how she was disposed of, and all of this. Obviously, it's evil. But I also think that uh, um, with those cards, I do believe that there was probably some kind of accomplice or partner in crime. Um, because a cult has to have more than one person, right? So, yeah. Hopefully this clears something up. <laughs> it's still a little muddy, isn't it? But as of right now, I definitely am happy that we have found Suzanne Morphew's remains. Suzanne was definitely coming through in the first reading when she said that it was dismemberment and burial. And now we just have to find out what about this money, this debt, you know, this fraud that's taking place. Because that is going to be a big part of finding out who did this. Follow the money and we'll find the killer. All right, I think that's all for this second reading. We may or may not revisit Suzanne Morphew again in the future, but now it's time to send Suzanne Morphew back to the energy from where she came. So, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here for letting me be a channel for your energy to come through and talk about who did this to you. I pray for justice for Suzanne Morphew. And I ask all of you to do the same as well. All right, Suzanne, thank you so much for being here. 
Now it's time for you to go back to the energy from where you came. And as I blow out this candle, I will no longer be a channel for your energy to come.